Y'all, thank you very much. This is very important. As you know, we're looking for a new director for the Department of Social Services. We provide very, uh, very important services to the people of South Carolina. So our meeting today, again, thank you. There's a lot of, a lot of brain power, a lot of experience and insight in the room. Our purpose today is, is not to remake the agency or to discuss all the policies, but to draw up a profile, a characteristics, the experience for what we're looking for in the next director. And it doesn't matter, I think, to us whether this person comes from South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, the moon, or any place, as long as they are the best that we can get, because we do need it. So that's our purpose, is to try to understand and express what we're looking for so we can hire someone to go help us find it. So with that, again, thank you. And we'll try to move along and not take everybody's time, but also cover the subject. So I'd like to ask everyone, if you will, please introduce yourself. A lot of people know each other. It always helps, and you never know, and the press is in the back. They probably know a lot of these, a lot of us, but uh, I'll start with you. Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I'm Christy Quattrone. I'm the Director of Cabinet Affairs for the Governor, and I'm going to be your point of contact for this project. And um, after we go around the room, I will um, give you a timeline and a little more information about how we're going to attack this, um, this challenge. She sits across the hall from me over there. We ha also have some people joining us on the phone. Do you want to start with the Yes, the let's phone? do that. All right. uh, on the phone, are you there? Hello? Sure. Hello. Hello, Miss Henry, Master. Tell us who you are, please. This is Tom Young, South Carolina State Senate. We've heard of you. <laughs> <laughs> Glad you're with us, Tom. Anyone else on the line? Tom, can you hear all right? I can, and I thought that I had heard at least two other people call in. Um, we were looking for Judith Metzler and Paul Vincent, who were the co-monitors in okay. this case. Yeah, we're both on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, can you, can you hear us, Governor? Governor? I can hear you yes, fine. Can, um, can anybody else? Know, sir. I'm one of the co-monitors of the um, Michelle H. Can you hear? Can I you can hear you. Yes, sir. All right, well, thank you. We're glad you're here. I'm Senator Katrina Sheely, Lexington County. I've been one of the people that's worked uh, for the last six years on um, the DSS subcommittee and very interested in whoever's going to be the next uh, director um, of DSS. I think it's very important. You know, it's Children's Affairs, it's Adult Protective Services. It's, it means so much to the state, and I think we, we need to make sure we get the right person to fill this position. Um, Thomas McElveen, State Senate, District 35, Sumter, Kershaw, Lee, and Richland County. And I've been serving with Senator Shealy and Senator Young on the BSS Oversight Subcommittee for about the last four or five years. Came in just behind y'all. Yes, sir. And I'm Shonda Dillard, um, South Carolina House, District 23, Senate District 52, which is Camden, Kershaw County. Um, I do have um, some experience as an attorney for guardians ad litem in the family court in Kershaw County. Um, did that uh, several years back, and uh, I've been serving in the House since 2004, and I look forward to this process and for us to get the right person to the job. Thank you. Yes. I'm Karen Lingo. I'm the director of state HR at the Department of Admin, and previously I was with the Department of Social Services as the director of communications and legislative affairs. 
My name is Carl Brown. I'm the executive director of the South Carolina Foster Parent Association. And the foster parent. And the foster parent. <laughs> and I've been working with Governor since Governor Edwards. I'm Justin Evans. Uh, I wear a number of different hats, but the one that is most relevant to here is my wife and I are going through the DSS adoption process now. I'm Stephen Gilchrist. I'm the chairman of the South Carolina African American Chamber of Commerce. I'm also a former executive at the Department of Social Services. So, Governor, thank you for inviting us to be here today. I'm Teresa Arnold. I'm the state director for AARP, and we've been really involved with working around the issues around the Adult Protective Services. I also was the director of governmental affairs at DSS, and I'm also a foster parent and an adoptive parent. <laughs> you, you are qualified. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Virginia Ann Mullican, um, and I started representing DSS back in 93 when, um, when the solicitors stopped and represented eight counties at that time for a number of years um, doing CPS and APS, and I have been involved off and on for a number of years since that time. Currently serving as the um, South Carolina Free Clinic Association um, director, so we're still helping people. <laughs> I'm Cynthia Flynn. I'm at the Center for Child and Family Studies. I'm the director. This is the University of South Carolina. I've been with the center for about 20 years in various capacities, and I'm really looking forward to this opportunity to work and help figure out what's going on and how to get a, um, a, a well qualified director. I'm Erin Hall, I'm with the Palmetto Association for Children and Families, and we work with all of the um, group homes and foster care providers and foster care placing agencies across the state, and we're excited to be involved in this process. I'm Michelle Dundershaw, I'm the director of the Children's Law Center at the University of South Carolina School of Law. Um, we do uh, training, uh, research, policy work in a variety of areas that impact vulnerable children. Uh, prior to that, I was the director of the Foster Care Review Board for 12 years. So, not, I'm sorry, I worked there 12 years, so I was not the director for 12 years. And um, so that's how I initially got into child welfare. Um, I'm just wondering how many states or how many law schools have a children's law center like this? So, I don't know that number off the top of my head, but it's only a hand, handful. And if you Google Children's Law Center, it's not a very unique name. So, there are hundreds of children's law school, children's law centers across the country, but very few are affiliated with law schools. Hey, I'm Jonathan Yarborough. I've served as a guardian and light attorney in other states, actually, Virginia and Tennessee, and licensed foster parent in South Carolina. And we've uh, been through the foster process. And Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Olga Rosa. I'm uh, a child abuse pediatrician by training, but I'm also the director of the South Carolina Child Abuse Medical Response System. We have been in effect for 14 years, quietly working directly with these children to assist the Department of Social Services, law enforcement, and all the agencies, guardian ad litems, etc. Um, to provide medical examinations for children with allegations of abuse. We are actually very well trained and specialized in doing that. We're only 22 across the state, and we see close to 4,200 children a year. And um, my program also provides the quality for that services and support from the legislature to provide those services as well. And um, we are very um, hand in hand with Department of Social Services, what they do, how this affects the children, and how can we improve the investigation process, but also the treatment side of these children as well. So that's what if, we do. If I can add, go to the Children's Hospital, Dr. Rosa has explained to everyone and, and easy to understand that after you hear about it, a lot of times when a child's hurt and goes to the treatment, unless you're specially trained in the area, you don't, you just the, the docs and nurses and don't have any clue that it's a result of abuse. It, it takes a, a real specialist to be able to understand that. Isn't that correct? That's correct. It, it takes, um, we go, the child abuse pediatricians, in addition to going to medical school and a pediatric residency, we also have to go three more years of training in addition to become board certified child abuse pediatricians. So actually, I have, board cert I mean, have double certification, general pediatrics and child abuse pediatrics. And we are co-located at the children's hospitals as well with the 
Women in Children Advocacy Centers, and Mr. Neff is going to talk about that. Um, so we are, you know, basically at the forefront. Everything starts with us. Hi, my name is Alan Foster. I'm the president of Southeastern Workforce Strategies, LLC, based out of Brock Hill, South Carolina. Uh, we're a management consulting firm, um, project management, uh, program development, data analytics, uh, change management, a lot of the litany of different services, uh, the human service agencies and other public sector businesses. Um, right now, we're in North Carolina. We have a major innovative project in two of the largest counties in North Carolina, foster care specifically the kids aging out. Uh, we're merging quantitative and qualitative data to see how we can improve outcomes and privacy and well-being, and uh, also expanding there as well. I had a former company from 2001 to 2008 that served uh, DSS statewide on the economic services side, so no state here. Well. Thank you, glad to be here with the parties process. Yes, sir. My name's Tom Knapp. I'm the executive director from the South Carolina Network of Children's Advocacy Centers. And children's advocacy centers provide forensic interviews and direct services to child abuse victims and their non-offending caregivers. And we provide coordination services for agency professionals like DSS workers and law enforcement to investigate those cases. Okay, thank you. I, it occurred to me as I was listening to this, we ought to get this group together more often to, to get a, a good context of what we're trying to do. Y'all willing, they will to do that. All right. Hey, Lewis. Uh, Lewis, tell them who you are. Well, I run uh, Bridgeback Home Affairs with the former uh, director of uh, LLR, Governor Beasley, and ran the South Carolina Manufacturing Line for about 14 years. And I've had done guardian and life cases and represented uh, a number of clients that provide services in South Carolina. Thank you. And in between, if, you know, this is, we're not going to be able to sit here all night and talk about this. I'm sure everybody's got lots of ideas. And so in between today and our next meeting, which will occur in September, and we will um, find a date that's agreeable for mostly everyone, you know, with this many people, it's hard. Um, if you all think of something that you didn't say or you would like to reiterate, please feel free to contact me. Everybody's got my card. Um, after, um, after we get all that together and the governor's had a chance to look over everything, we will have our second meeting in which we can discuss some of these things further. And if anybody has any questions or clarifications, um, we will then, um, the governor can then compile the list um, of qualifications. We will then look to DSS, who's gonna hire a professional um, executive search agency to go out with our qualifications. Uh, the governor is, you know, is called down, because I'm sure we'll come up with a lot of good ideas today. And, um, they will then um, conduct their search, and we'll give them a few months to conduct the search, and then um, we'll meet back um, with, they will then meet with the governor and give them their list of um, candidates that they've come up with, and then a decision will be made, um, hopefully by January, and so then when the session starts, we'll have a new director in place. That sounds all right. Okay, so that's, uh, if now we'll, discussion is, is open for uh, what, sort of qualifications, experience, insight of the person we're looking for for this very, very important job. And as we get into that, all those who are involved in foster care and adoption services and family court and all those things, I, I think I can speak for about five million South Carolinians in saying thank you, because it's highly important. So thank you. All right. So um, to see. You know me, I always have something to say. Um, first of all, and you've already said this, it needs to be a nationwide search. We don't need to just search, you know, what we have here. I mean, there are a lot of good people at DSS. There's a lot of good people in South Carolina, but we need to find the best of the best because, you know, we, we keep making changes. Well, let's find somebody that's going to stay. Let's find somebody that's good. Our, our children and our families deserve the best there is in South Carolina. And we need somebody that understands all issues. I mean, you know, we all know that we gotta have somebody that's qualified. They gotta have the education. I mean, we can we could talk about that all day long, you know, what kind of education they've gotta have. But we've gotta have somebody that understands it. not just children's issues. We've got a lot of people at this table that are about foster care and children's issues. 
but we got adult protective services too. And then we've got the financial issues too. You know, we're not talking, we haven't even talked about that. We've talked about, you know, worrying about children who are uh, abused and neglected. And Lord knows that's what's near and dear to my heart. But then we've got all the financial issues that we're, we haven't even, you know, hit on that. So we've got, you know, food stamps and all that stuff falls under DSS. So we have to have somebody that understands that every bit of that falls under the Department of Social Services. And, you know, we, we've been working on a, a child support system for 30 years, Lord knows. And, you know, we haven't finished that yet. And hopefully, October 2019, we're going to be through with that. I wouldn't know my husband that long. So hopefully we'll be through with that by then. But we have to have somebody that understands all those things and how important that every bit of that is to this. And it's not just, you know, we don't need a one-trick pony. We need somebody that understands all of that. Um, so I think that when you're writing down all these great ideas, you know, we need to find somebody that knows how important every one of those issues is, and it's not just one thing. It's not just foster care. It's not just adult protective services. It's not just adoption services. It's everything. So you got to be pretty multi-talented person. Although your issue is the most important issue on the table, that person's got a lot of responsibility. And the Department of Social Services is probably the largest agency with the most responsibility in the state of South Carolina. And they got a lot on their plate. And no matter what you do to the Department of Social Services, there's still going to be problems because we can't fix what parents do at home. And we can't fix what children do to their parents at home. You know, talking about adult protective services. So there's always going to be problems. But we need to make it the best we can and we need to find the right person to run that agency. And if we have to go to New Mexico to find somebody or wherever, or to the moon, as you said, let's go find that person and let's find the right person. Let's just don't settle. Let me ask this question. You're exactly right. Do, do we, have we decided how we want to consolidate and sort out all this information? Do we have someone? Who, That's uh, me. That's you. <laughs> you lucky girl. I think you get the big dollars. <laughs> Well, I, I wasn't planning on going around the room necessarily in a sequence, but anyone who wants to follow up on those points, just uh, raise your hand. Yes, sir. So, and I think tell, it's sort tell of, them who you are again. They look I'm nice. sorry. I'm Carl Brown with the uh, South Carolina Foster Parent Association. Uh, the complex issues that I see in our state with foster parent require so much communication. We need a director that knows how to communicate knows how to get it from the top all the way to the bottom because if we don't get it all the way to the bottom we don't get it done and so to me i think it's so important that we're able to communicate and direct it right on down so that the worker at the end knows what to do and how to do it i think that's so important communication yes sir Good. i'm gary clary uh Governor, I, I think uh, this agency head should be a, a top level executive. And when I say executive, he or she has to have a myriad of skills to cover everything from legal to child protective services to adult protective services and everything in between. They have to be able to run a massive budget and administer that. And, and to be able to select and hire people who can carry out that mission. Uh, th this is almost an impossible job, but we've got to find the person that can, can fill uh, those roles because uh, I see and talk to many people who are involved in as foster parents or uh, in adoptions and so forth. They've got to understand all the issues that confront our legal system and uh, the challenges that uh, that everyone's faced with there, whether it be someone trying to adopt someone, uh, protecting the rights of, of, of parents, all of those issues. So uh, it's really got to be someone who has many talents and I agree with Senator Sheila certainly their educational qualifications, but we've got to have someone who is truly a uh, top-flight executive for this agency. Mm -hmm. 
when you own the bench, you own the circuit bench. You, yes. weren't, you weren't in the family court. No, sir, but when I practiced law, I was in the family court, and that is, I wouldn't be a family court. <coughs> I, that, that's just something I couldn't do. Uh, and my hat's off to the men and women who, who perform that, that task because that is the most difficult job, I think, in our judicial system. Uh, that's it, my impression as well. The, the yes. experiences I've had, it's, it's, uh, it's heart wrenching. Very difficult decisions. Thomas? Governor, yeah, I'll follow up. And thanks again for the opportunity to be here and be heard on this. Um, I've got a lot of time in the weeds on this with the Oversight Committee and the Senate. And we're not as much Senator Shealy and Senator Young. And I was certainly agree with the comments that are made. And I don't want any of my comments to be construed as, ne as negative. Because when the lid blew off of this thing five or six years ago, we all know what kind of mess we had. And I think we have moved in a positive direction. But I think we got to keep stomping on the gas on this issue. Because we still got some pretty serious problems. And Governor, I just want to talk about the qualification that, that I like to see in the next director. Um, one of the first things I want to say was this does not need to be somebody in government who's looking for a place to land. And so that's why I'm very happy about your opening comments. Where you, I'm like you, I don't care if they come from the union or yeah, from, from Timbuktu, it doesn't matter to me either. Um, we've got to have somebody in here who, who obviously has that institutional knowledge. Um, but what I see is you know, we've made advances on things like lowering caseloads, and that's great. But I think what we've seen in our, in our oversight subcommittee is a severe um, lack of morale within the agency. And if you go into some of these places, I mean, these, these offices are places that look and feel institutional in a lot of cases. And, they're places where people come to and have a lot of turmoil in their lives. And you know, so I think that we've got to have a director who is an energetic person, who is a truly involved leader, um, who has that energy and that desire to, to really roll the sleeves up and you know, get on the ground in each one of the 46 counties and identify the problems we continue to have. And I know DSS is more than just protecting children. Um, but Mr. Brown, would you, the words you use, communication, that, that's been my word for the last five years because what got me involved in this whole thing is people who called me. And Senator Sheehan, I think, in the same way. And what, what continues to irk me is situations where the left hand, the, where the right hand is doing. Um, you may have a child whose parents have criminal charges, uh, who DSS is actively moving towards terminating criminal rights. But that child is then placed under a safety plan with a grandparent where a parent is coming in and out of the house. That's not safe for that child. So I think we've got to figure out someone who is, who is a communicator. Right? That's, that's the biggest issue here. I just, I'm sorry, I just want to follow up on that. Thank you, Governor, for allowing me to uh, invite you to be a part of this. Could you speak up a little so that yes, you so can hear me? Yes, um, I just want to follow up on what the senator was sharing in, in, in that um, communication is, is big in this particular, uh, I think, job. But also someone who has real experience. Sometimes we we have seen the higher folks who want to land there think it's a great opportunity, but they really haven't had the experience or the track record to show that they can handle something as massive as what we, we are talking about. Um, and going back to the communication, I mean, there are stakeholders all along the line, even the folks sitting in this room, and that person has to be able to coalesce around various groups and even legislators to tell us what you need, when you need it. Let's not wait till the emergency uh, uh, happens. And then I, I am fresh off, y'all will have to bear with me, I am fresh off a two day retreat with my company from <laughs> university and I had to do a strength quest. <laughs> and so I, I, you know, so when I think, so I started thinking about this task and I said, well, I think the person has to have some context so when you walk in, if you're from the move, you gotta be able to have something that to, to quickly see patterns, where South Carolina has been, where South Carolina needs to go. And then that individual needs to have some type of ability to be strategic in the work that we need done uh, with all the stakeholders. And, um, and, and again, we can't say enough about communication, and that's really influence. And you know, if they're not a good executive, executive person, They've got to be able to have the ability to see talent in others and hire the right people around the jobs that we need them to do. And so I've talked to a little bit of <coughs> folks in the field and 
you know, they're lonely at the 46 counties. They want somebody to come see what they're doing. They do want that cheerleader and that motivator. And then finally, I think we have to have somebody who understands. If you're a good communicator and um, a person who's very personable, you will understand what it takes to have a good caseload and how to work through that. That's one thing to have numbers. I used to be an inside sales in my previous life, and when I worked with customers, you need to know how much time it takes to work through some of these complicated um, issues that we face with children and families and adults. And so that would be, that, that's a perfect person, isn't it? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> They're out there somewhere. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Governor, I just want to thank you again for convening this group. Senator and Representative Folks, I thank you for those comments. Being a former executive at the agency, one of the things that I think is one of the most valued resources that we have at the Department of Social Services in this state are the 46 county directors that we have in every county in South Carolina. And I can tell you most of where the rubber meets the road is in those counties with those directors. And more specifically, giving, empowering them to be able to do the work that the legislature and this General Assembly and the governor's office required and expects of them to do. Uh, we used to tell them when we were at the agency some years ago that those local delegations in your county are critical to getting things done for your constituents. And that those families that you serve, whatever county you're in, those are your constituents. And I think we've got to re-empower our uh, county directors in the state uh, giving them the ability to understand how important it is to communicate um, both from the state level what we're trying to expect and more specifically what we expect them to do and to give them the tools to make sure that they're successful. So I just wanted to just comment on that. I think the communication component that I think will be a consistent theme to, throughout this conversation will be critical. I got a question. I've forgotten. What, what do we usually pay this for the director? Yes. 160, 160, 160, 160, 160, 160, 160, 160, 160, 160, 160, 160, 160, 160, 160, 160, 160, 160, 160, 160, 160, 160, 160, 160, 160, 160, Somebody had to serve that. might be just right. Mm -hmm. this, yes, ma'am. This is Teresa. And, um, I, I was wondering if there was, if we went at this a little bit different, from a little different angle, and look at where um, social services is being done the best. Mm -hmm. You know, where which state is doing the best about protecting children and vulnerable adults, and see what do they require. It might be a good template going forward, or 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 do a little analysis of some, some of the best directors in these areas. Um, and and because I made that suggestion, I would be very happy to do a little research with you. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's that's a good idea. A lot of the best ideas we get, of course, are see what somebody else tried and maybe may not have worked, and what is working. Good. Yes, ma'am. I, Cindy. I'm Cynthia Flynn and I'm with the, South, um, the University of South Carolina College of Social Work Center for Child and Family Studies and we do a lot of the basic training. We also help with quality assurance reviews. We do some of the development. We work with the lawsuit monitors on different tasks. So we have a kind of a broader range because we do not only child welfare but adult protective services. Um, I think that, that if you look at the big picture, we need to look at someone who can maximize the resources and recognize the resources that they have both internally within the agency. I said I've been there for 20 years, which equates to about six or seven directors um, that I've you know, had different interactions with. And it seems like coming into the agency and recognizing or trying to discover what you have in the agency, what resources you have, and using those. Also looking to your community and to your legislative and to your um, agency partners. And because South Carolina, I mean, so Department of Social Services requires and has to hand, hold hands with a lot of different folks, whether it's adults or children or whoever. They have to, and you have to get along and, and, and use the resources effectively. Um, I think we also have to look at, we have a federal lawsuit right now for child welfare. We have 
lots of other things. We have those support services that they're trying to do. Um, so we have a lot of, and there's there's a lot of different service uh, funding sources that you can use to maximize what you've got. Um, the university has been a partner for uh, since the mid '80s. We were we've been a partner and and help co do cost share so that they can bring down and match money money, and and using those resources really wisely because we're a poor state and we need the support and the help of. of and we ought to use what we have because we're all federal taxpayers and state taxpayers. We want to use our, our taxes wisely. So I would say enlist the support of everyone. You know, be on the work with the legislature, work with all the other um, agencies, everybody to really kind of jumpstart and 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 build on what you have instead of tearing down and then trying to build in a whole new thing. I mean, there are a lot of good things about the agency. And there are all a lot of good things about the ag other agencies in the state, and build on those and and use the support. I mean, the University of South Carolina, um, I know the people have said I would say the same of Clemson and the other, are very excited and wanting to help out. And I have 83 staff members that are thrilled to death to be working and doing these, you know, kind of things. They they think that they're they're a valuable resource to the agency. Yeah, that's that's a good message for everybody. Our, these our universities, research universities, and colleges, and and in other areas, of technical colleges, are very willing to bring their firepower and, tech, and, and technical expertise into this is a, is a great advantage. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, ma'am. Um, this is Michelle Dundashaw from the Children's Law Center, and Teco Carl and and Stephen. Um, so I think the agency will rise and fall on its middle managers, right? Which are basically county directors, right? So no one can manage it out of Columbia, right? I mean, not no one, but that's a very, very difficult task. Thankfully, we're a small state, right? So you can drive to all 46 counties, like, right? We're not Texas, we're not California, so we can physically get there, right? And lay eyes on people and hands and talk and inspire and do all those things. But it will rise and fall, and historically, in, in my experience, has risen and fallen on the county directors, right? They are the ones out there. They're the ones who should be developing relationships with their local legislative delegation. They build community partnerships because uh, although I've been a resident of Columbia ever since I got to South Carolina, you know, we don't have all the answers in Columbia and probably not a lot of them, right? So, so much of that is local. And children are safe when communities make them safe. Right? So these kids who are on the fringes, right? We think about the kids who are in custody, kids, but it is neighbors and teachers who keep kids safe, ultimately. So as much as, right, you do, of course, have to have the right laws, the right policies, et cetera, but until, and there are fabulous county directors. I'm not saying anything negative about the county directors, but those county directors are so critical to the success of the agency. And then another piece um, is sort of getting back to basics so really, and I know there's a lawsuit, and I know there's <coughs> federal requirements and all kinds of things, but I think if the department would do some of the basic things really, really well, like onboarding, for example. So I know there are staff, maybe not in Susan's tenure or Karen's tenure or anything. What is onboarding? Onboarding, like, so when you show up, like, people know you're coming. So I have heard antidotally, you walk into the DSS office, and they're surprised, You've, this is your first day, there's not a computer for you, there's not an email address, so then you're sort of passed around. And so obviously things like that happen from time to time in any organization. But, so if you are trying to recruit people and you're not paying them well, at least they should walk in, be greeted with a smile and say, here's your desk, here's your pens, here's your paper, here's the computer, and I think when you start a job and no one's expecting you, I think that can really impact. So that's what I mean about getting back to basics, like how's the interview process? Did people know you were showing up on the first day? And that's a, a small thing, but I think if you do some of those little things well, repeatedly, it ends up being big. But then the state director hire the county director? Correct. So if the state director's doing their job, then the county director, because we have some very, very good county directors. Yes. And I think that if 
if it, it starts from the top, right. if the top's doing their job, then it's a trickle down effect. And I, I see that happening every day. And so I think that sometimes I think the top's too heavy sure. and that we're not letting the middle do their job. Sometimes I think the top is stifling the county because I know for a fact that sometimes the county offices have been told not to communicate right. with the legislative delegation. Sure, so when that happens, all communications cut off and we can't do our job, the county directors can't do their job. So I think that the whoever's at the top needs to understand that the county has to communicate with their legislative delegation if everybody's gonna get their job done because nobody cares about those children any more than Senator McElveen, Senator Young, myself, uh, Representative Dillard, Representative Funderburg, Representative Cleary. We care because we are we are there every day. So when they are told at the top that the county directors and the social workers can't communicate with us, uh, foster parent Yarborough over here knows for a fact what I'm talking about. He can tell you the situation. They can't talk to us. They can't talk to him because that, they're stifled. So the top has to be the person that's the trickle down. It's not sure. the bad county director. It's them not being trained, the county director not being told. Let me help with that now. I help, I instruct everybody to talk to the legislature. <laughs> 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 I'd just like to follow up on this, a lot of talk about communication and maximizing resources. Uh, sorry, I'm Tom Knapp with the South Carolina Network of Children's Advocacy Center. Uh, we've learned in the Children's Advocacy Center world that in order to improve outcomes for children and their non-offending caregivers and to reduce cost of these investigations, we need collaboration between all of the professionals involved, mental health workers, medical, DSS protective services workers, and law enforcement. And when we get that, and when that's working well, children have better outcomes, and it's less cost, it's more cost effective to conduct these investigations. So we really need to look for someone who's got a proven track record in fostering and encouraging that collaboration. It could be better, it's not perfect. Sometimes we don't have the collaboration we need in, in different counties, but when it works, it works well. So if we can focus on someone who really has that track re record of fostering communicate or communication and collaboration, not only in the investigation of the field, but between state agencies and trying to collaborate and figure out where can we remove services that are duplicating other services. I think in the end, if we don't forget that, I just think that's an important uh, qualification. That, that's always a problem in government. You have overlaps so you, and you sometimes people going in different directions for different reasons. That collaboration is a, is, a, is a great word in government. John? Yeah, I just want to say I, I agree with what Johnson said. Um, in my simplistic mind, when I was thinking about what could a director bring to the table that could help address a lot of the issues that Mr. Brown talked about and, and getting, I, I don't think anybody at the top necessarily has the wrong philosophy. It's just that it doesn't permeate throughout the agency. And it's almost a process issue. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like you need to go find someone who's an expert in Six Sigma Black Belt or something to understand the processes to correct the, the problems uh, over the agency. I mean, I, it's, it's almost like Representative Dillard's perfect person, but it's almost like an engineer with a personality with a heart for the vulnerable. <laughs> <laughs> systems change, uh, being able to reorganize, and also integration, okay? Integration will help with the uh, collaborative or uh, collective impact of uh, areas that we're looking at with other agencies and other stakeholders. 
But first, I think that the agency itself has to have a leader who can come in and set up a framework for change, okay? But first, they have to come in and, and do some assessment and uh, establish some priority outcomes that they want to achieve. Uh, when you talk about getting back to basics, I think that's a, a big part of it. Uh, you have to assess where you are, and then you can start to look at where you want to go, okay? But it has to be strategic, as you said, uh, Representative uh, Billy. I think that uh, all these comments are important, but someone has to have a background in being, being willing to come in and they have had some experience in systems change, okay? And uh, reorganization and immigration as well. All good points, yes, yes. Um, thank you, Governor Justin Evans. Um, I, I would add uh, uh, to, on, on that the, the background is important, but the backbone is just as important. Mm -hmm. Somebody who who's willing to make because some of these decisions when you reorganize the agencies are tough decisions <coughs> that require very tough conversations. So somebody with a history not only in in, in with reorganization but with doing it uh, in in agencies public agencies would be a benefit because that is not an easy thing to do pretty much across the entire country. Um, it's not an easy thing, so uh, it requires a lot of those difficult conversations that somebody's got to have the backbone to do. Um, the other thing I would I, I would offer as a, as a requirement suggestion would be um, the amount of data that the agency has at its fingertips is tremendous across all of state government, whether it's corrections, DJJ, Triple B, you name it, DHEC, it's got the, the, the amount of data that this agency could leverage is unbelievable. In addition to the opportunity that's there, you have the child support enforcement system which is still not implemented. So somebody with IT background or with implementation, complex implementation background that would be able to understand why we still don't have the system up and running. Can we get it finished on time? Um, and I know we have a plan in place to do that, but somebody who, who, can, who can understand that because every agency across, uh, across as I've studied this, um, this field across all of them, you know, in, in different states, everybody's moving towards a more technologically based approach to child welfare and, and permanency and well-being. Somebody who has a little bit of background in that would be very uh, beneficial to the state. If I could just add on to what you said about the data, because I think that's an excellent point. It would I'll also tell be, the press who I'm you sorry, are. I'm Erin Hall, Palmetto Association for Children and Families. But you're right, there's a massive amount of data, and I think it would be great to find somebody who can really process that data and use it to, um, to impact outcomes for vulnerable adults and children. Like play off what all of y'all said. Even if you didn't have somebody that that would be willing to make the tough decisions, to find somebody to help them make those decisions, and playing off what uh, Mr. Foster said, you know, we with all that data we have, we ought to be able to take the information that we have at DJJ and DSS and HHS and all these systems and probation, pardon, and parole. If you look at the facts, and facts are that most of these families intermingle a lot. And they run back through the system and they, you know, the people that are in corrections, you know, these children are, you know, it's, it's a fact. These, some of the, a lot of these children recycle and, and the families, the, the, the children, the people that abuse their parents, some of these people are the same people. If these systems could talk to each other, but it's almost like we're territorial with our information we DJJ don't want DSS to know what they're doing, and you know why don't we want them to know? Because we might could save a child or save, you know, keep a child from being abused, or you know, why do we are we so territorial with our information? And with all the information we have, if we could get our systems to talk to each other, and this is something that you might could, you know, be beneficial. Well, that's an excellent point, uh, Senator Shuey, and uh, actually in North Carolina right now, we're trying to do just that because the uh, integration that you're talking about between different systems, uh, having valid data analysis that correlates amongst uh, different populations, okay? And they touch each other, all right? So I think that's something really important that could be very helpful. But it takes, uh, it's taken about three years to work on that process there. We're starting to get to finally see some movement in two of the largest counties, working on the second largest county as well. But it's getting people to start to believe in the fact that we're really looking for change. Okay, people, when people start to see that you're really looking for change, 
they start to slowly start to give some information. But somebody has to, to be here to start to put that in place and understand the points of this work. Excellent point. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Governor. Um, I've really enjoyed listening to um, the input from the fine folks on this committee. Um, and some of the some of the words that I put down have been uh, mentioned here. But um, a couple that haven't, um, one was trust. Um, trust of the public in this agency, um, that, it, that it is doing, doing the work um, that it is um, entrusted to do. And, um, but also trust within the agency, between the case managers and their supervisor, and the supervisor and the county director, and the county director, and, and the upper management. Um, and then also, um, you know, the, the culture of the agency is something that, that I would like to see improve. And that comes along with, you know, uh, relationships comes along with uh, communication. Um, it comes along with um, consistency. So these good systems, new systems, change systems that, um, that we need to find, we need to be able to uh, implement them and be consistent with them. But it also helps when you have employees who have been there or who stay there for longer than six months or a year. So we need to have an agency that has the culture, um, that includes the communication, the relationships, the trust, so that we can um, deliver this customer service um, to the taxpayers of the state, to the children, to the vulnerable adults in the state, um, and thereby having the trust of South Carolina. Oh, it's five o'clock. We can do a little bit longer if you like. Yeah, just if we'd like a, a, everybody, some of you be fighting traffic. We don't want to stop too quickly, but we don't want to go too long because people have some other things to do. Yeah. Just an opportunity and Mulligan, um, and I just want to follow up with on what Representative Senator was just saying is that um, I think that that agency and this person should be able to put the human element back into the social services. Because I think in our quest, and I think we see it everywhere, not just in DSS, we see it in education, we see it in all kinds of things. In our quest to do things efficiently and gather our data and have all of our numbers, we lose some of the human contact with people because we see them as just one more number. And we, instead of caseworkers spending the time that they need to build the relationship with the child, and to know all the information about them, they're worried about making sure that all the information is in that CAP system and they don't take the time to do it because they're so overwhelmed by it. So I think I think that would fall over into economic services as well. Like a lot of people come in and, and you need workers who are there who are willing to listen to the people. These people are struggling. People that come into contact with DSS are struggling with something in their life. And I think that our workers need to be, or that the agency, like what you're saying is the culture, we need the data, we need the outcomes, but we also need this agency to, to be helping people. Governor, I hear you say all the time that South Carolina is so great because of our people. And I believe that. I think that we should let this agency give the, the workers the opportunity to show how great our people are and help our people. Any other comments? Yes, sir. You know, at one of the hearings several months ago, I made a statement. DSS is just such a downtrod piece of agency. All you read about are bad things. We never read the good things. They do wonderful things. So I think the first thing we got to do is make sure that we support this agency so that it can regain. And I, I mean, I don't know. They, they so. When I walk at the state office, and you know, the doors are closed. They're so, you know, they're, they're depressed. They, they really don't have, I don't know. You know, when I, I work for my company, I felt good about it. I did wonderful things there. 
It's not that way. Look at the turnover we have there. So I think we must rebuild the image of the South Carolina Department of Social Services, and we can do that. We, it can start now, and I think that's the first thing we got to do in order to have the best agency we can have. They can like sit in those offices and open the door. We don't have to whisper about things doing. Who's not here? Who's doing what? You follow me? We're on the right direction. So we got to do everything in our power to make sure that people understand there are great people at the Department of Social Services, and we want to support them to become what they can be. Think about it. We're protecting our children. That's the greatest thing that God's given us to do. And we must continue to do that. We've got to support them the greatest way we can. Thank you. Yeah, I was, I was going to add some context to that. So I'm Karen Wingo. I was with the department in the role of Director of Communications and Legislative Affairs. I don't want anyone to lose. Everyone here knows a piece of DSS. Um, some of these stats stuck with me. In state fiscal year 16-17, the department handled over 46,000 reports of abuse and neglect that resulted in 26,000 investigations. At any given point, there's over 4,000 children in foster care. The SNAP participation rate has decreased as the economy has improved. The SNAP participation rate in any given month is over 640,000 individuals. Child support collected over 300 million. Um, and as Senator Sheely reminded us at almost every single oversight hearing, those aren't numbers, those are people. And those are people oftentimes at the very worst part of their life. I mean, there's over, I want to say it was over 5,600 accepted reports involving vulnerable adults. Um, these are all people and these are all South Carolinians. And so I want to put that context in the room as we wrap up, that those are the numbers that we're talking about, that this person is going to step into that role and it needs to be somebody truly courageous when you think about the breadth of that position and how many people those represent. Well said. Well, it, it looks like um, I think we've got a pretty good grip on, on what we need to do. And it's a big task. And not only do we need a need the perfect person that's an engineer and all those other things, <laughs> but uh, there, there's a lot of room for improvement, I'm, I'm sure, in the agency, just like it is in every other agency. Uh, I think we've also demonstrated for the thousands of time the importance of collaboration and communication. We can eliminate a lot of problems and a lot of waste and increase efficiency and production and happiness by communication. Uh, I'm serious about that, uh, Senator. I, I want to, and this is for, for everyone, I want, I want the people in this agency and the others, I thought everybody got the message. I want to communicate, and it, particularly if legislators Call and you want facts. If you don't get them, you let me know, and we'll fix it and we'll fix it immediately. Because that—that's how we learn, and that's how we grow. So we will meet again. I would invite everyone. If you have ideas, thoughts, usually when you go to make a come to a meeting like making a speech, there are always three speeches. There's the one you plan to make, the one you made, and the one you wish you made. <laughs> <laughs> so what you leave here is new thoughts cross your mind. Write them down. Send them to us. We will, we'll just distribute this, make some sort of a summary, and send it out to jog everybody's memory. And let's let's try to get some things on paper. And we'll go. The next meeting will be in September. We don't have a date yet. We don't have we'll a date, but we'll get it. And uh, if you can think of someone that you think might be beneficial uh, to the group to come and make a presentation or, or make some points, let us know who that is. We'll be sure to invite them. But I hope. It, I hope we can stick together till, till we get this done because I think we need a little bit of stuff. Is somebody on there trying to say something? Somebody trying to say something? Yes, sir. Yeah, this is Tom Young. I just wanted to add. Can y'all hear that? Tom Louder, Tom. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Barry. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, one last thought was is that we have at least 40 years worth of hearings with DSS and oversight. Senate, and there's, there's really a, there's economic services, there's children's services, and there's adult protective services. And I know that everybody that mentioned those in various capacities around the table this afternoon. But one of the things, like you normally say when you talk about education, you say that poverty is the enemy of education. One of the things that's overriding in these hearings is that a lot of the people that are in the system are in poverty. And one of the things that I think we need to keep in mind is we need, we need to be looking for someone who has shown innovative leadership on policy and programs that is focused on trying to provide relief to those who are in poverty and in low income uh, areas. And we can look to, for example, maybe the um, 
somebody there to give us some direction on potential candidates to be successful in other states. If you look at the states that rank high in the kids count report, many of those states have a much lower level of children in poverty than say South Carolina. One of the states that jumps out to me is Virginia. Um, they are a state that you could argue is part of the deep south. They are way ahead of all the other traditional deep south states in the kids count report. So there may be some stuff we can learn from Virginia. I just say that based on where they are in the kids count report. I have no other information to suggest that. But I just want to add these because we start thinking about this as it's so critical to get the right person to lead this agency in the, in the next um, administration. Uh, thank you, Senator. And the others on the phone, Judith Meltzer and Paul Vincent, do you have anything to add before we wrap it up?